what I have here on the bench today is a Rotrek supercharger. It's a C3892. Customer sent it to us because it, it broke. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys are as curious as I am, but I want to pull one of these apart and see what's inside it. See if you guys are ready to go on the journey with me. I'll just start pulling it apart and see how it goes. I know that at the very least takes the cover off. But I don't know how much farther I'll get into it here. Some little keys in here. I think I'll leave uh, leave it on here. It balances very well like that. trying to do this somewhat live because I don't even know what's going to be in here. I figured you guys might be just as curious as I am because these aren't like your regular centrifugal superchargers. There's no gears. This is all traction driven. That's why they have the special Rotrex fluid. It's a traction fluid. So what I'm guessing is I believe there's some form of planetary in here. Like I said, I'm not even sure, but I have a supercharger in my hand and I'd like to know what's inside it. This one has a bunch of red stuff in it so that they know when I've taken it apart. Let's see if I can get some of that out of there. If they know you've taken it apart, no more warranty. Sure, we all know that none of us on the channel here really probably know how to work on one of these things. Ah, there it is. Good. Just needed to scare it a little bit with the hammer. I don't know if taking these out takes this back cover off, but. nothing else here that I can see so Doesn't it? Yeah. If there's nothing else going to fall out, maybe we can pour that out. Oh, walk it over to the bin, just leaking as we speak. Yeah, it's coming everywhere. Just like shoved through it. All right, so this is what it looks like apart, which is interesting because we've bolted a bunch of these on and tuned them, and to be honest, we don't really know what it looks like inside. So it's actually pretty interesting. I mean, we're looking at this and taking it apart, and we're figuring out how it works as we take it apart. But this is the outer case, and this here is fixed mounted in the case. And this barrel here, this is the outer, is actually spinning with, again, you kind of see the configuration here. It's almost like a tripod. This is sitting like this in a triangular pattern. Now, this is spinning around. The supercharger belt is actually connected to this barrel. And this is rotating which rotates these barrels, which is rotating this center shaft. I don't know if you can see that. This shaft here is what you would see. This is 
the impeller. So it is spinning this, and this is obviously the compressor side. But we were trying to figure out how it gets this multiplication, RPM multiplication. Um, you know, the engine is spinning this, let's say, two to one, so 8,000 RPMs. We've got a 16,000 RPM on this, which obviously this is doing 16,000 RPMs too. Well, this diameter multiplied by this diameter increases the speed of these, and then obviously it's multiplied again. So I think the impeller speed is what, 90,000 RPMs? I think max is 90,000 RPMs. It's 90, that's max. We, when we calculate our pulley size, we calculate it to be way under that, but that is how this system is working. This goes in there that way. Where's the pin? Just kind of like put a clutch together. Which way does the pin go? So that is connected there. That fits in there, it's all bolted together. And that is it. That's how your road truck supercharger works. That is all the inner workings that you don't see. So this part here, your hub is, this is the hub right here, the hub bolts to that. And then the pulley is bolted into this. And again, we're trying to find the weak link in the supercharger. This part here spins the barrel. We're calling it a barrel because we don't know what they call it, but that spins this right here. This is just floating in there and this spins like this. Now the question is this piece here is two different metals. As you see one is a machined tube that has the thread in it and there is also a hole in here which the other shaft goes into but this is what appears to be pressed on. So we're thinking does this come separate from that? These little tabs here actually go into this portion, which this goes through here, this is what you're used to seeing on the front where right, your pulley goes, or on the back side at least. And this here is an oil pump, very similar to the oil pump that rides on your crankshaft. Those pins right here line up with those pins here. So this is spinning. This is the cover where your two oil lines attach. So if anybody's got one of these apart, send us a picture of this if you have a broken one. We want to find out the weak link and see if we can either build these stronger or at least pass on the information to those that build them. They probably know, which I don't know why these are so secret, but it looks like that should be either welded there or pinned or something. Something has to attach that better than that. That press looks like it's waiting to come loose. All right, so get this out of here again. You got that? Yeah. Sure, sit in there tight. So once you've got your three barrels in there, see here, and now you spin your shaft. See I'm spinning the shaft. See how much slower the barrels are going? Well, when this drum is on there, you see how much speed we have on there. There's your multiplication right there. Well, the key is to get that back in there. I think it has to be pressed. And then obviously the little parts go together. This is obviously where the turbine wheel goes. But to get that back, I think it's a pretty precision setup to slide that in there. Because it came out pretty tight. All right, so I'll give you an idea of, this is what it looks like assembled with this piece on here look and the hub is on there and uh, we just put the turbine wheel on lightly just so you can get an idea of the speed you see actually the mechanical advantage right there see the speed the turbo is going or oh, the turbine compressor wheel should i say so it's a pretty good mechanical advantage 
All right, so I hope you found that interesting. It was actually pretty cool to see what it looks like on the inside. Keep in mind, we've done 58 kits on S2000 alone, so it's kind of cool we've been getting this piece and bolting it on the engine. And to be honest, we have no clue what was inside. You know, you have an idea, you go, well, I think it does this, and I think it does that. But it's kind of cool to see the inner workings. And if you guys want to make any comments, if you've built one or taken one apart, or you've found any weak links and find out what breaks in these things, it's, again, it's somewhat of a mystery. No, nobody seems to want to talk about it. Nobody's really, you know, showing you the inner workings and showing you the fail points. And the supercharger is super efficient. We've shown that many times compared to a turbo obviously a turbo is you know known as free power it's driven off the exhaust which is you know disposed gas so the supercharger is actually drawing off a belt which means it's using power well on let's say uh eighth gen civic at nine and a half pounds of boost we typically see 350 355 wheel horsepower which to get that kind of power, you need a pretty large turbo, and this supercharger for that car is pretty small. The, tur the uh, compressor wheel is pretty small, which tells us, obviously the compressor wheel is very efficient, but the fact that the supercharger doesn't draw as much power as a conventional supercharger, I mean, we've shown you that on S2000s. If you put that compared to, say, like a Paxton or a Vortex supercharger, the Rotrex supercharger, makes 40 to 50 horsepower more at the same boost so it's it's very very efficient so interesting to see it so thanks for watching hit the like subscribe and see you next time